I think the only thing we can't talk about is the actual podcast because I can't remember it. <laughs> yeah. oh, I kind of blanked out as well. So let's just do a half pint. <laughs> I'm the one with control issues. <laughs> Speaking of control issues, um, welcome to the Number One Crude Mistakes podcast <laughs> with Glenn from Number One Projects, KJ from 59? <laughs> no, Crude Mistakes <laughs> Efficient, and myself, Howard, from Behind the Mistakes. Welcome, guy. <laughs> <laughs> So very special half pint ep- made episode dish. What yeah. is this really? It's, it's a half pint, isn't it? But what's special about it? And it's coming down hard after a Scopin Festival and should it be a quarter pint? I mean you just it feels like you left my workshop yesterday and that's because you did. <laughs> <laughs> Or was it the Almost. day before? Day yeah, before. Well, yeah. Yeah. Time flies. I only got home yesterday, though. Yeah, you actually did. Yeah. I. I'm not gonna lie. It felt good. Getting in your car half an hour later, I was on the couch <laughs> with a gin and tonic, and like, ah, yeah, oh, yeah, and I started getting pictures from. I'm on the train. I'm on the airport. I was a decent <laughs> guy. I didn't send a picture of me on the couch. I think you did, didn't you? Uh, only one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you didn't rub it in. I mean, that was that no. was decent of you. Yes. And I, I, I thought it was a great show. I think. I think I predicted it right on our last half pint. I said, uh, you know, we're going to be nervous between up until the show, and then after the show, it's going to feel good. Sunday's going to be a good day because there's not much going on. And then Monday is going to be shite. I was definitely (laughs) right with that. (laughs) If I learn anything, it's take Monday off. Yeah. But still go home on Sunday. I mean, don't linger on for Monday (laughs) as well, because then Tuesday going to suck. Take Tuesday off as well, then. (laughs) Take the whole week while we're at it. Yeah. I'd still probably stay right up until the end. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's just a budget issue. If you start saving uh, now, you can have the economics ready for it next year. I don't know whether I could ever have the economics ready for a whole week of drinking in a Ah, yeah, if you want to be drinking all the time as well. Yeah, that could be. No, that's, that's, that's a 10-year plan, I think. <laughs> I, I got paid today, and I made it... Uh, a deliberate choice not to check my bank account before those money came in again. So <laughs> that difference or the dispenditure these uh, last couple of days uh, is not as visible. And I'm, I'm sure as hell not going to go and like sum all those numbers up. It's like, <laughs> that's, uh, that's under the bridge way down the river. and I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> that's kind of the way I've gone with it as well. I've not looked. <laughs> If I don't look, it doesn't exist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Healthy. <laughs> Thinking about it, that's how I solve a lot of my problems. And I mean, it's, it's worked for 40 plus years, so just <laughs> going to continue. So do you think we have gotten anyone to start a podcast yet? I don't think we have. <laughs> have we? Do you, know, do you know somebody we have? No, 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 but no, I mean, but it, it's not like we didn't try. Uh, as I remember, I've been think we've been pushing the concept quite hard <laughs> towards certain individuals. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we, we followed the theme of the of Scopper Festival in the whole. How, how hard can it be? I think to show them <laughs> how hard it is for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a full time job oh. <laughs> <laughs> no but at least uh, uh one guy the, the pancake bot uh guy 
picked my brain about uh, what the software to use and where to upload and that sort of thing. So at least someone was interested. That's going to be a fun podcast, isn't it? <laughs> I would. The Pancake Bot podcast. <laughs> I mean, they are an entire family, so they probably have a lot to talk about. Okay. So why not record it? it. <laughs> and also, um, I mean, we, uh, of course, we, we had both the kids there on Saturday, uh, and we ended up in queue waiting for that um, pancake uh, robot. And just standing there, I realized I have all those parts. I mean readily available in my workshop uh, but yeah i would like to pick his brain on on the software that controls the the nozzle that drips the what do you, do you call it the pancake batter or pancake yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because it looked like it was a, a vacuum no a pressure pump so it just put pressure in the container and then of course it just spilled over into a tube which basically okay. was the nozzle Hmm. So it's basically just probably an on and off signal to that pump. So I just need to modify that window washer fluid engine I used for the whiskey dispenser to make it dispense. Uh, <laughs> I'm, go- I'm going to make the fastest. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking that. Fastest pan cut robot ever. <laughs> I can remember you trying that for the whiskey dispenser and it just going everywhere. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm not sure which costume I could pair that with, but I mean, having a bottle in your pocket and that one just like having a a peeing simulator. I mean, that would be, I mean, you could really impress someone on a, on a Friday night when you're just uh, lining up with someone and like, uh, take a leak and then you shoot like six meters across the fence and shouldn't have waited that long and then you just leave <laughs> like a pressure washer in your pants <laughs> yeah okay that's, uh, that's should, nice. we, should we that... circle back to the start of Scarpa Festival and if we're talking about it <laughs> if you want to okay go for it can, I'm not sure if I can stop. remember that far well, I got in. I got in late Friday night, didn't I? And uh, yeah, very late. Was, was joined. Well, it was ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that felt very late, at least for me. <laughs> and I joined some very tired makers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so one in particular, <laughs> KJ was. Uh, yeah. A very tired boy. I always forget how much uh, <laughs> energy traveling sucks out of me. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was tired. So you went off to bed. I think a few of us carried on for a little bit longer, didn't we? It was. A, I think I managed till about gone, just gone twelve. Had a few pints. Yeah, that's that's the thing, though. Um, it <coughs> felt extremely light, like into the the small hours of the morning. But no, it. it I think it just barely past midnight for me when I just yeah. all right. I'm off to bed and. On Saturday as well, I mean, I was standing sleeping at five, half past five in the <laughs> afternoon uh, when we had like the the first celebratory cheers and then we went to get some food and something and we had a few beers and like, all right, this is, you need to go to bed soon before the birds start chirping and the sun rises <laughs> and looked at the clock, oh. It's half past ten in the evening. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, how this... um... So, you came in late Friday. Um, Some of us started a bit earlier, so we went to Rasmus Luen and his workshop. uh, Banged some steel and had a few beers before we went down um, to Oslo. And... I think we met most of the CMOs already on Friday. No, Rolf came in on Saturday. Yeah, I think the majority was already on Friday, but yeah, with some some later additions. Yeah. It was really great uh, meeting them now that we put a name on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah well, it, was, it was great meeting the CMOs. I'm sorry I missed out on uh, Rasmus's... Uh, 
forging experience that, that looked like a lot of fun but uh, you never know maybe next year yeah maybe next year um, yeah. um i i think uh, i'm not sure i might have agreed to something uh, on saturday <laughs> but the details are hazy at best so we'll see if the, <laughs> the ones once behind the festival uh, remembers uh, just as little as i do you did come back actually from that conversation wittering on about something but i can't remember either <laughs> exactly <laughs> you, so you were very excited <laughs> i only remember you being away for a long time uh, I, I actually thought you'd gone gone back to the hotel <laughs> For the longest time, <laughs> I, I went for a beer and then uh, I stumbled onto some people, and uh, then I had to go and get another beer. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's it's a good metric on a good evening. I think. I mean, if you go to the bar and you just stumble onto people that you basically never talked to before, and you end up like drinking a whole pint standing there, and all right, I need to go and get a refill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good metric. We got back to uh, Saturday morning at the start of the festival. That was uh, nice having a wander around the festival, wasn't it? Plenty to see. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I think I think we spoke about it in the main episode, although I've got memory issues over what we spoke about live and we've not listened back to it yet, have we? So, <laughs> but I, um, the saxophone guy and the uh, guitar pedal guy were brilliant to see and various other bits and bobs. That yeah, good. that was what you mentioned in the. Yes, in the... Yeah, that was the battle I remember from the main episode. <laughs> <laughs> I remember walking around in the morning, and uh, not being too nervous about things because I kept looking at my watch, which was still set to English time, which is an hour behind you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking, oh, I've got ages yet. <laughs> Bumped into a bar again. He said. Uh, we probably ought to head up to the stage soon. I said, oh, we've got ages yet. I said, no, we're going in half an hour. Said, oh, shit. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that was a good thing, though. I mean, you you, you did not get to uh, experience that last hour of stress before going on. <laughs> now, I, I can't remember what we spoke about to save my life. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there might have been some <laughs> nerves involved and I remember we came when the festival opened and we went uh, straight up to the third floor to check out the venues and talk to the audio technician. And then you just started to run into people and we did talk about we should just walk the floor to see what's there. So we have something to talk about on the podcast. And I just remember like, oh, oh no. We have half an hour, and I just had to tell whoever I was talking to, like, sorry, I, I need to, <laughs> I need to go and see what's <laughs> actually here. And so I had like this desperate run, trying to just, uh, all right, all right, that's that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, and uh, probably forgot all about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I have. I don't have more recollections from the show than you, but uh, I do re remember uh, seeing snippets of it because I had Stian uh, take some uh, video for me of it. So I actually uh, watched some of it on the train back. Uh, uh, but editing, starting to edit the, the video about the show just after leaving the show, that's not really the best thing to do. I, th I feel I need a bit more space in between... <laughs> Yeah, five, five, six months. It's yeah, not yeah really something like that. Something we'll, like that. <laughs> we'll look forward to it in March. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was hoping to share some of that actually as a for a real for uh, the weekend, but uh, it's all it's all shot in long in horizontal form, isn't it? Yes. Yep. <laughs> so I can only focus in on myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one <what> you. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> But, I mean, for our two listeners who weren't there, um, Skåper Festivalen is held at Dijkman, which is the big library in Oslo city center. It's, it's just by the central station, so it's very easy to get to. And compared to a lot of other events, this is free. And it's still, as the festival is going on, it's it's still an open library, so you have a lot of people there. And it's very kid-friendly, and the venue has 
five, six different floors with different themes. And of course, on the third floor, they have um, the, the scene where they can do live podcasts, they, they can do concerts and whatnot. And the entire library was built as this multi-purpose building. So they had like a, acoustic engineers in on the very beginning of the planning. So you could actually have a lot of things going on in different corners without that interfering too much unless someone has a a, a rolling sound box they just keep <laughs> pushing in front of them then then of course you can uh, bleed over into other events but it is a really nice venue for that and it, it's a nice place to hang around and it, you kind of end up in your own bubble you at some point, it was a bit hot, so we went outside to get some fresh air, and it's like, oh, there's a world out here. So it, it's it's kind of a place where you can get kind of lost. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if you if you're only English speaking and you go to this festival, don't be worried about that. Every stand, every person I spoke to, I mean, they started talking to me in Norwegian. I apologize for being the English idiot that I am. And they instantly started talking to me in English. No hesitations, no problems. It was fantastic. Very, very impressive. It was really great having you there as well, Glenn, because then I could have you as a, as a reason for talking English. So because some of the Norwegian accents are harder than the others to, oh, to, okay. to figure out, <laughs> especially when they gotten a couple of pints down. Well, when we were out uh, drinking, it's, you know, there's, there's quite a, quite the group, isn't there? Quite the large group of people, and you know, you're all chatting, and then people t- go to their little separate conversations, and every time those little separate conversations happened, it went back to Norwegian, and if I just happened to say something or somebody looked at me and started talking to me, it was instantly straight back to English. It was brilliant, but I don't know what they were calling me while they were <laughs> <laughs> having the little bubble conversations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, re- I remember that at a couple of occasions uh, at the dinner when you left. We just like, oh yeah, he left. So then we just switched back to Norwegian. But it, it took a minute. And then when you came back again, it's like you switched mid-sentence. So you just continued yeah. what you were going to say, but you just went on <laughs> in another language. It's it's kind of cool. Um, it's very cool. <laughs> practical. <laughs> But what I think was cool is, oh, I mean, all the makers on the first night, we went to, a, what do you call it? A food venue with a lot of different restaurants. So you can just order whatever you want and mix and match and bring it to the table. And everyone was there. And it was, of course, a, a great atmosphere. And then later in the evening, I realized it was us. The CMOs and two other makers that were left. Everybody else went home to bed. Yeah. And, of course, it, it felt good being last man standing because that hasn't happened in 20 years, <laughs> uh, going out drinking. Um, and, of course, I, re- I, re- I realized because, yeah, that's just because we had a 40-minute podcast and that was the end of our responsibilities. But <laughs> these people actually had to get up on Sunday as well and arrange a festival. So understandably, yeah. they, uh, all right, we, we have a day tomorrow. So they were being responsible adults and, yeah, we didn't have to. And that was that was nice. I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it was. And then, and then KJ got tired. Yes. Um, we went off to another bar, and we stickered the hell out of that bar. Can you remember? Oh, did you? I didn't even know about yeah. that. <laughs> I, uh, You'd remember now, don't you? I, 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 yeah, I, I stickered up everyone else's stickers, <laughs> and then I had to be bullied into putting one of mine up. Um, but thinking back on it, it it was a lot of stickers in that before but i'm not sure if that was like totally different kind of uh <laughs> stickers or if it was in some o- official matter but i mean as a as a decent maker you see all right somebody put a sticker up here he just like instantly <laughs> yep Spunk. 
Yeah, we we started where the other stickers were, and then we got a little bit more inventive. <laughs> yeah, started. Uh, That's on brand. Yeah, <laughs> I think we stickered up the uh, fire warning sign on stage. <laughs> yeah, what to do in an emergency? I need to stick around it. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> and luckily, luckily, I don't, uh, I don't have my name on my stickers per se. <laughs> not that it's not impossible to find out who it is, but someone has like their first name, last name, <laughs> and some figurine, and yeah, those went up first. Yeah, that was, uh, that was nice. There's some good beer in that pub as well, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the dog pub. Which we later realized was called the goat something, so it had nothing to do with dog. But just, I mean, at some point, someone mentioned a dog, and that just stuck. <laughs> so no wonder we struggle finding it. <laughs> Should be a pub here nearby. Dog Google Maps. Nope. <laughs> and then the uh, best part of the weekend happened directly after that pub. We went for a kebab. Who knew Norway had kebabs? <laughs> That was maybe the best kebab I've had <laughs> as far back as I can remember. Now, that being said, if we <coughs> have gone and had anything else, that would probably also have been the best of that <laughs> thing I've ever had. <laughs> With just the right amount of drunk. Because <laughs> I, thinking back of it, I had breakfast on Saturday at the hotel and then I wandered over and got myself a cup of coffee. Then I got another cup of coffee and then I had another cup of coffee and then I realized I can't drink any more coffee because then I'm going to be sitting there like uh, someone with uh, like Parkinson's disease up on the stage just shaking all over and says, all right, so you just keep it down and then afterwards like, oh, we should, all right, let's go get a coffee and then get a coffee and yeah, we had a, a, a small bite at the, the like at the restaurant at the end of the day, but I have basically not eaten all day, just yeah. binging coffee. So, so yeah, that kebab <laughs> saved saved the day actually. Yeah, we you, you you stopped with your family, didn't you? We all went off for lunch on the Saturday after the podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of us had a pint or two as well then. Yeah, no, I, I did not. Uh, I, uh, I just ran after a six-year-old and a four-year-old who were uh, <laughs> high on sugar and <laughs> being outside. So. I didn't mention that, that like 20 minutes before we were supposed to go on stage, I realized I need to eat something. So then I went down, but the queue was really long at the, at the coffee shop. So I went over the street to... See, but there was a long queue there as well. So I get, get go go. I went over to the station to get. Uh, and there I got a, a sandwich or something like that. And okay, it's a it's a quarter until we're on stage. Yeah, I'll, I'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> I stuffed that in my face, and I think I arrived like ten minutes too or something like that. And <laughs> that felt it felt like me pushing my own. Um, before going on stage nerves just to be <laughs> not to be in the building be far away from the stage that's yeah everyone who knows me knows that that's not really yeah for for me. being the 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 master planner control freak uh that was uh, very audacious of you to just yeah, turn yeah. Out, just yeah. pop out <laughs> well, you have to get out of your comfort zone at times yeah that's true that's true I, f I felt we did, and all the feedback I've got is like, all right, we, we did a good job there, so uh, I think we can cross that off the bucket list. And uh, It was never on my bucket list to do a live podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I put it there, so, yeah. <laughs> so now yeah. you can cross it off. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. crossed off. Yeah. You got it by association. Yeah. Us both. So then um, the Sunday arrived... Um, and I think all all people agreed that all right, it's going to be a slow start on Sunday. Um, and we chose to just have a quick breakfast, and then we did a workshop tour. Yeah, we did. 
That was really <laughs> yeah, we <great>. did. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually that. That was probably the most thing I was looking forward to on this trip. Actually, was to go into your workshop, and it didn't disappoint. It Definitely was not. awesome. It, it was really nice to have uh, someone in the workshop who knows how to appreciate a workshop um, <laughs> and not like, oh, there's a lot of weird stuff in here. And <laughs> Do you do, you said? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how, did it, how did it feel for you having two, two people in the workshop? Just taking photos and filming things, and, and touching your stuff, and touching your stuff. I don't. Well, I think I don't think we're allowed to touch anything, were we? <laughs> no, at least uh, <laughs> you needed supervision, and I, I did uh, start to uh, to count things after you've gone to see uh, if everything was there. Uh, <laughs> I was kind Damn of. Damn it! Should have taken a souvenir. I wished I had. I didn't think of yeah. it at the time. <laughs> it, it would have been. I mean. I would probably not have gotten that idea before afterwards anyway, but it would have been cool if it was me visiting one of your workshops and then just <laughs> putting something discreetly in your pocket. And then at the next recording, like today, you just put it on the shelf behind you and see, like, does he notice that there is a, a kazoo in a display or something like that? <laughs> yeah, it was fascinating seeing um, all your, your projects there all, all in real life. They all seem a little bit smaller in real life. <laughs> Everything looks smaller in real life. Right, yeah. And uh, we even saw your massive organ. <laughs> that did not look smaller in real life. No, we did not have a bigger, if anything. Oh, yeah. luckily, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's, uh, it was really nice. And you got to meet the family as well. And uh, yeah. yeah, we had a, had a nice lunch before we had to go uh, back to the venue. Yeah, pancakes and brown cheese. Oh yeah, <laughs> and let me just let me just sound the record now. I quite like the brown cheese; it was nice. Yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> so now I know what to get you for Christmas: smash and brown cheese. Yeah, just mix them up in a bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just heat up the brown cheese and I just dip the smash in, so we got the double dipping Ooh. layer of chocolate <laughs> and brown cheese. That is a weird fondue, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Smash brown cheese fondue. That's yeah, on, that's great. On the Saturday morning, actually, in the hotel breakfast, I tried brown cheese for the first time. I had a full English breakfast to start out with, and then I thought, all right, I'll go back and try some of this other, not not weird food, but just weird for breakfast food for me. So it was pickled herring. I had a bit of that, and some brown cheese, and uh, some gherkins for breakfast, which is just I would I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that for breakfast here. And uh, various other bits and bobs, and then uh, feel a bit dodgy afterwards. If I'm honest. Yeah. <laughs> I think the gherkin was supposed to go on the what's it called liver pate? Is that what oh, call? I didn't see the liver yeah. pate. You have that for breakfast too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It should have been there somewhere, I guess. I think I saw it somewhere, but yeah. I'm very uh, just cheese sandwiches for breakfast. Plain, boring guy so yeah <laughs> but what should have been there but we could not find of course on the way back again uh we found i mean we skipped taking the train back so we just drove all the way back into the city and we stumbled over and this was my first live encounter out in the wild of these blue laughing gas canisters and of course, I just all right. That's coming home with me. And of course, we went in, and when I came back, it was gone. Oh, mm. so I had a bit of a bummer there going home again. And uh, yeah, I should have. So that's why you don't see them because the Norwegian cleaning services actually work. <laughs> yes, yeah. but the other trash were still there. So I think someone. Ah. Maybe it's because it's a, a maker festival. It it might come to good use so i've, I've come did, to terms with it we did tell a few people we'd seen one didn't we and then yeah, it was but bigger than normal <laughs> we we didn't tell them where did we or maybe you did i, I didn't so I, I don't know where you parked exactly. <laughs> so yeah I, I got lost in the actual library several times that weekend <laughs> <laughs> so many floors 
yeah. so many escalators. Yeah, yeah, it is a bit of a maze. Yeah. And I mean, just learning how the structure works and then where to find possible places where people could exhibit stuff and then see if someone is exhibiting something <laughs> yeah. like at that. It's a, it's a tough one. You need to walk around a couple of times. Yeah, and I mean, I, the I, first time last year when I was there, it took me like a couple of hours before I realized the the main main stage thing on the uh, on top floor. I just walked around and all. Okay, uh, okay. I go to the top floor. Whoa, here this here is everyone. <laughs> okay, now I re- realize what I missed. Um, and I missed it last year, but it, it might have been there last year as well. But I found in the reception, they had like this small pamphlet that showed all the different levels. And it showed some uh, color coding where you could find some exhibitions or, or somewhat. But that was the end of the information, basically. So, yeah, that <laughs> one. And... If I were to plan it, and don't take this as an invitation, smog dog, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not volunteering for anything. But um, you could say that some of the the various stands and so on, they they had like a theme and they were grouped together, and that could have been made out on the map. And I'm not sure how close up to the actual event. You could apply to have a stand, so that there's a, probably a time restraint there. But yeah, I would have had that information out on the web page a, a little bit earlier. But I think it's the it's usually a public library, so I'm not sure how the interface and their web page is set up to present this information mm-hmm. because they have a lot of. Uh, small arrangements, uh, concerts and whatnot. So they get small links and small pages, but um, I don't know how much time they spent on making elaborate uh, interactive maps of the venue for <laughs> for a two-day yeah. event that happened just once a year. So, I mean, there was a QR code that you could scan to, for the program, but I don't. Yes, I guess I don't have it much more either. But what I would like to have, if I were to do a request is some kind of street sign or something like a sign pointing somewhere and telling telling me what is it what it is that's over there and i mean this is something that the makers themselves can do i would say uh, just make a make a sign pointing to where you are and something telling you what's tufting over there and a big yeah. big pointy thing that should be, be helpful fair, to be fair to them I was, when i was talking to uh, Hans Smogdog um, he was saying that you know they get a room to store some of the things there, but they're not allowed to start putting it all out till nine o'clock in the morning. So I don't know how much yeah. planning they can do. I think they've probably got a rough idea where they want to put things, but uh, maybe there's not not enough time to do that planning at all. I think it it all just seemed a little bit last minute. Not that they didn't do a good job because they did. Yeah, that that makes sense though because we. I mean, the library opens before the festival, and of course, we had it over there. I think you went before me, but after breakfast, I, I think I was there like a half an hour early, and I met a few of the guys uh, having a stand there, and they were like frantically like they they just opened the doors for us, and yeah. we have twenty minutes to basically put up shop before people start pouring in. So. People are already pouring all around us. <laughs> yeah, and that's ba- basically the people who just goes to the library. And there are a few of those who go to the library and uh, plan to uh, study or uh, read or whatever. And then it <laughs> turns out, oh, there is a booth over there with a guy that makes uh, guitar pedals. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he... Uh, I, I mean, the it's... stubbornness of some of the those people were quite impressive. Just sitting down, studying with your back to a stage where people were constantly talking about stuff and audience coming and going. And I, I would have gone somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you can shut it out, it's okay. But I mean, it's it's known for being the venue for a lot of things. So you don't go there for peace and quiet 
Mm, true. Between Friday afternoon and Sunday evening, because then they have concerts, uh, festivals like this one, and uh, of course you, you can't go there and then go up and complain to someone. Can you turn it down a bit? Well, it's, <laughs> this is what is on now. I mean, if you want to read, then you should uh, find yourself one of those. They have quiet's booth, but this one person is like, nope. I sat down here, and this is where I'm gonna sit. Okay, I will play my guitar. So <laughs> I am looking forward to getting the recording back. I guess obviously by the time this half pint is released, we'll hopefully have had the recording back, and it's come out a couple of days before. But um, obviously, I do remember the announcement halfway through our podcast. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and they actually warned you about that, and that is yeah. one of the fun quirks of. I mean the the library part runs just as normal so sometimes they have announcements for I mean lost kids uh, or uh, public service announcements and they don't care what the program is at any given time so I think um we had an announcement during our recording Nerdforge I think had one uh, all yeah. the all, all the major uh, right. presenters had a, a disruption and I was really pleased with ours because they were like publicly friendly reminding people that, all right, you, we have a designated area for public strollers uh, or baby strollers and please keep them there so you don't block everything else. And uh, I just remember that on the spot, I just, yeah, or you could bring them over <laughs> to uh, the garage Avenger and he can uh, prop them out for you. And I, I, I really was pleased with myself being able to actually play off that service announcement. <laughs> yeah, it kind of felt like when you see comedians uh, going around playing shows at like a pizza parlor where they also do the food announcement on the same PA system that they are using so, <laughs> in the middle of a rift or a family pepperoni ready <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it felt it was I mean that's it's a nice uh, homemade feeling of Scalper Festival I think it's a you can tell that it's made from by the people who are into it it's it's a maker thing made for makers by makers yeah with no, yeah no, I, no commercial interest whatsoever is there no 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 that that's it is that low-key feeling that makes it a hit i think and uh, i remember when we got the information uh for everyone who's on the uh, uh side of making things happen it's like all right we understand that some of you would like to to sell things, but keep this uh, low key. You don't have a, like a full blown sales booth uh, where you want to just only sell things because it's it's a free event. We want kids to come in and just find the joy of just making stuff. And if they just come there and still get bombarded by buy 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 and so on, it's just like any other event. So I really like that. And I mean, they had a, a, a booth for where, where uh, people were selling stuff. Where you can put stuff to be sold, but you could only use that if you had the whips, the mobile, uh, yeah, paying thing. So I, I mean, I couldn't even I couldn't even give them my money. It was that anti-commercial, so I couldn't even buy stuff, even though I wanted to. You know, I think I have to correct you there because I saw. I saw ad here the other day that Vips is now also operative in Sweden. So I think yeah, yeah that might be. But I think you actually yeah. can download the app now and start buying shit in Norway. Yeah, probably, but not buy them there. I feel, <laughs> and I'm, a lot of banks are not uh, you uh, okay with it in Sweden. I read because I also checked out if if I could use the Swedish version in Norway, but no, I can't. Oh. Yeah. So, except beer, I didn't buy anything. But yeah, at at, at some point, I'm I'm getting a guitar pedal. But that is one of the things I was really impressed with the um, the guys who have that booth. They had uh, business cards, yeah. which was basically PCB boards. So it is the PCB board for a, a guitar 
pedal, but all the components is missing, but it's stamped on the card, which uh, like resistors you need, what pot meter and so on. So oh, wow. like here is my business card. And if you want, you can order all those parts and you have your own guitar pedal. So that's going to be a project maybe between Christmas and New Year. That's like a, a small soldering project you can do when you're sitting home uh, at Christmas while uh, the rest of the family is puzzling Lego or... or Something I can, yeah. yeah. Sounds like a good wintertime solving. thing. Yeah. Oh, cool. I didn't realize it got the parts they needed stamped on there. I got a couple of those boards as well. Yeah, and that got me thinking. I have a lot of. I'm going to meet up with him later because we have a lot to discuss. Um, but yeah, also, where do you order these and what amount to what price? I mean, I, I want business cars like that. Or <laughs> <laughs> it feels like an upgrade for, I mean, when you get that, it feels a little like, oh, yeah, here's a sticker. <laughs> you feel like a five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying that you want a PCB way commercial. Yeah. Yeah. But that being said, though, um, I I spoke to a few guys, and I'm the Hellcorder guy, obviously. So I'm, I'm just going to have to lean into it because there's going to be there's going to be another event up in Trondheim, which is a city outside of where I'm coming from. And yeah, yeah, the Hellcorder should be there. It's a, it's, it's a experimental rock something and yeah, it needs to be there. You kind of put the pressure on. I'm not sure if I said yes or no, or if I should think about it, <laughs> but yeah, it uh, you probably did. I probably did. Um, so yeah, put a bit of pressure on to, completing it if that is ever possible making it fully playable at least yeah and did you tell them we'd, we'd, we'd do a podcast at this event as well <laughs> <laughs> well when you mention it <laughs> <laughs> no i did not uh <laughs> o- oversell us but i mean if you're interested uh, no. we can make a weekend out of it uh, at the moment, I'm not interested in meeting other people, no. <laughs> but but that, come again in a couple of weeks. That being said, though, doubling back to visiting each other's workshops, um, we talked about next year's Maker Central. Um, yeah. We could come a day early and crash uh, Glenn's workshop. And yeah. uh, then we discussed, all right, and then we have to do the same in Sweden. And then what kind of maker... Uh, events do you have close to you and it's like you could hear the the crickets chirping <laughs> and the tumbleweeds rolling by uh, hopefully it's just me who are, who's ignorant to what's right under my nose but so please if anyone knows of anything please tell me because i am this ignorant and stupid uh, yeah we want to know i mean the uk have a huge maker community uh, I mean, Australia and the States, they have also tight-knit communities, which is well-known, but the Swedish maker community needs to, to send us a DM. I mean, we are hoping <laughs> you're out it. there. <laughs> I love that you think he's got a community named after him. <laughs> the Swedish <laughs> maker community. <laughs> That's a different thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what, why he's not in it. Uh, because it's a bit full of himself calling him, him the, himself the Swedish maker, like it's the only one. But yeah, I mean, I, I might be uh, shunned out of that community as well. That's why I'm playing around with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rolf is the Norwegian maker. That he is. Yeah. Is anybody an English maker? Who is the, the English maker? <laughs> Yeah. Rebrand again. Do it <laughs> while you still have time. The English maker, the Swedish maker, the Norwegian. Is there one that really comes off the wrong way? I mean, <laughs> the German maker? No. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's let's not dig a bigger hole. <laughs> no, no. I'm just going to look and see if there's an English maker. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is a half pint we can do Googling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's turned into a very long half pint at this stage. Yeah. Yeah. I think we have enough. 
He says yawning. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. We, we need to know. That was your fault for the whole weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. The That's yawning right. Swede. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone's got there already. Oh, is there, is, is there an good? English maker? Oh, no, it's... There is an English maker. It's also... It looks like a Malaysian chap, and it's just spelled English differently, with an I instead of an E. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it looks like a... Okay, the English maker. Hello, everyone. This is my online education platform for SSC, MTS, CHSL, CGL, CPO, Railway, Bank, Air Force, Navy, SSC, GD, Jog, Hand, Police, etc. Always help you. There we go. Yeah, those are words. Sounds catchy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lots, of, lots of words and letters. Yeah. He knows the alphabet. That's a good yeah, frame. Apparently. Good frame. <laughs> He's got uh, 338 videos and 522 subscribers. I'm going to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's one and a half per video, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know what that one's about. Even having just read the description. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. All right. You... But then, as the. Uh... Scott Festival then came to a halt on Sunday. The this half pint follows along. Bye. 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 <laughs> that was a messy episode, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, lo- looking forward to editing that one. <laughs> mm-hmm.